pleasant afternoon. We are here again, here in Jamaica. It's half past two. Remember, it's mid-week power, not midday. We are here again. It's the 10th of August, 2022. Where did the time go? There's four more months left for the calendar year 2022 to go down in history. And the closer we get to the end of the year is the closer we get to the coming of Jesus Christ. And we don't have tomorrow. Yesterday is past. Today, he says, while I stand at the door and knock, Revelation 3 verse 20, harden not your heart. We have come. We are about to begin to serve this meal, this spiritual feast. I asked you to join me in prayer as we begin. Let us pray. Loving Lord, Eternal Father, we thank you for all that you have done and all that you are doing. Bless us today as we feast on this spiritual meal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's take a look at our topic this afternoon. Our topic states heading towards the inevitable. Riot and bloodshed. The best preparation is to be hid in Christ now before tomorrow. Our title again, heading towards the inevitable. The word inevitable means it will happen, must happen, will not be stopped. Heading towards the inevitable. Riot and bloodshed. The best preparation is to be hid in Christ now before tomorrow. I want us to read, as it were, opening statement coming from testimonies of Jesus Christ. It's from the book Education, page 228, paragraph 2. From the book Education, page 228, paragraph 2. It says, at the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine, but human the centralizing, here's the problem now, the centralizing of wealth and power, the vast combinations for the enriching of the few at the expense of the many. I want you to read that now. The centralizing, stay in one place, in one circle, only amongst a few people, is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine but human wealth and power the vast combinations for the enriching of the few at the expense of the many the combinations of the poorer classes for the defense of their interests and claims the spirit of unrest of riot and bloodshed there it is the worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution, all are trending, or sorry, tending to involve the whole world in a struggle similar to that which convulsed France. This is inspiration. This is coming from the pen of divine. This is the word of God. This is what God said will happen, has happened, is going to happen, anarchy is going to sweep away all law. Not only divine, but human countries are going to become destabilized. What will be the problem? The centralizing of wealth and power. And that's happening now, post-war. That's happening now, increased inflation. That's happening now, with the poorer classes increasing, and they will pull together for their defense. Why? Of their interests and their claims. And what will that lead to? The spirit of unrest. Can you see it? Has it begun? Is it spreading? 
engulfing nations and countries around the world? Is it happening in your part of the world? America, hmm? South Africa, hmm? England, what about Canada? Is it engulfing your part of the world? Has it begun where you are? What is that, Pastor? The spirit of unrest, not only that, of riot. Not only that, and the bloodshed, we are going there. It is inevitable. The worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution. Go and read in the 1800s about the French Revolution. They turned from God and they put a naked woman and enshrined her as their goddess, their goddess of reason. And it led to fire engulfing France and blood flowed through the gutters of France. And that's when the guillotine became popular and the statements were heard ringing throughout France every day off with thy head this is the spirit that's about to engulf the whole world this is where we are church and I want us to read what the Bible says read what the Bible says it says in James chapter 5 in James chapter 5 reading from verses 1 down verse 1 says go to now ye rich men weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you, your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is conquered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. This is a nail in a sure place. Verse 4 says of, Ephi of James chapter 5, Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. Cry it, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Entered into the ears, church, of the Lord of Sabaoth. God will hear the cry of the poor, the cry of the afflicted, the cry of the downtrodden. God has seen the wickedness of the rich, of prime ministers, of these few men, of those behind the curtain, of those pulling the string, those who benefit from war, those who are benefiting from high inflation rates. Their gold and their silver is going to be conquered. It will have no use and they are equal in treasure together for the last days continuing James 5 verse 5 ye have lived in pleasure God is speaking now on the earth and been wanton ye have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter verse 6 says ye have condemned and killed the just this is where God is going to step in and he doth not resist you wickedness verse 7 now be patient therefore i'm speaking to the saints i'm speaking to god's people i'm speaking to those who will be hid in this day in christ i'm speaking to you be patient therefore brethren unto the coming of the lord yea he is coming again lift up the trumpet and loud let it rain jesus is coming again be patient therefore brethren unto the coming of the lord Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and at long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. What will be the preparation for what's coming? The early and the latter rain. You cannot get the latter if you don't get the early. The early comes before, then the latter comes after. Those understanding are in the very name. Early and latter. Rain, the Holy Spirit, the pouring out of God's power. Revelation chapter 18 verses 1 down to 4. This will be our protection. And those who are id in Christ even now, for we are not sure of tomorrow. We have to be hid in Christ. Today, we are heading towards the inevitable. What is the inevitable church? Riot and bloodshed. Hashtag riot and bloodshed. What's the inevitable? Hashtag riot and bloodshed. Look what's happening, church. 
Look what's happening. Blood and fire threatens the streets of Argentina. Anyone online living in Argentina? Anyone online on the live living in Argentina? Have friends in Argentina? Riot and bloodshed. Blood and fire threaten the streets of Argentina. As social unrest rears its ugly head. As I said before, we are heading towards the inevitable. It's coming. Next news. It says, worried Brits. This is now England. This is now in England. The Brits. Britain. Anyone on live from Britain? Anyone on the live from England? This is your news. I predict a riot. Worried Brits. Expect cost of living crisis to spark crime wave debts. And there it is again, riots. We are heading towards the inevita in inevitable, sorry, riot and bloodshed. We are heading towards the inevitable riot and bloodshed. And our best preparation, what is our best preparation? To be hid in Christ, to be in Jesus, to be under the shadow of his wings and his protection, righteousness by faith, for the character of Christ in you, and that ought to be now. That ought to be now, today, for tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Worried Brits, let, let's take a piece out of this now. The worried Brits expect the brutal cost of living crisis to spark a crime wave. Deaths and riots. A shock poll reveals. A shock poll reveals, church. 80% expect more shoplifting and 51% think riots will take place. This should be a wake-up call to our next prime minister. People want help now. People want help now. Someone who is living there said it started long ago, Pastor. It's not only being highlighted. It is only not, she says, being highlighted in the news. And that's someone who is presently in Britain, in England. This should be a wake-up call to our next Prime Minister. People want help now. Alec Shelbrook said, and I quote, What I've been seeing on the doorsteps for the last six months is absolute fear. In people's eye. What is the case? Absolute fear in people's eye. Do we need encouragement today? Oh yes. Do we need power today? Definitely. That's why you have made a stop to midweek power. To midweek power. That's why you have made a stop to midweek power. Let's give some encouragement now. Let's get some power now. Psalms 91, verses 1 to 4. He that dwelleth, come now church, in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Abide under the what? The shadow of the Almighty. Now, today, be hid in Christ. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. Be hid in Christ. My fortress be hid in Christ. My God be hid in him. And in him will I trust. Not governments. They will fail. They have failed. They are going to fail. Not people. The arms of flesh will fail. Be hid in Christ. Surely he shall deliver thee from the sneer of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence. God has never failed. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. Be hid in Christ today. Now. Tomorrow is not promised. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou thrust. His truth, his truth, church, shall be thy shield and thy buckler. The inevitable is coming. We have a fortress into which to run. We have a place to which we can hide, to which we can find salvation, and that is in Jesus. When? Tomorrow? Mm -mm. Today. 
Today now you hear my voice because it is coming. It is the inevitable. It will not be stopped. It will not be stopped, church. The inevitable. Let's take in this news. We spoke about Argentina. We looked at Britain. It's coming. There it is. South Africa. By any chance? Anyone on the live? South Africa? This is your news. Two dead in anti-cost of living protests. Two dead in anti-cost of living. Against the cost of living. The high rate, the inflation. Two protesters were shot dead in South Africa on Monday. This is August the 4th. It was August the 4th, on Monday, during a demonstration against rising utility prices. This news is dated August the 4th. That was fired upon by police. You see what's the issue? Rising utility prices, cost of living. The protest took place in the township of Tembisa. In the township of Tembisa. Up there is where this took place, church, in the east of South African economic capital, capital, and that's Johannesburg, where angry residents, particularly over electricity, there it is, there it is, cost of living, electricity prices, they block roads with burning tires and set fire to a public building. Is this just one place? Am I overreacting? Is this just one place, church? Am I overreacting? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. They're in England. They're in Argentina. They're in South Africa. What's going to happen to the money? It will be conquered. Won't be any good. Do you know Wall Street? Do you know Wall Street? We went from Argentina. We went to England. We went to South Africa. Now we are in New York City. Now we are in America. And what are they saying there? Wall Street is collapsing. Church, be wise. Church, be wise now. Church, make your final preparations now. Church, stop hoarding up money and spend where it needs to spend and get your land and country things together. Church, put it in the work. Church, time is winding down. Here's what it says. Wall Street is collapsing. New York mayor, what did he say? He says, we are in, look at the red box now, we are in a financial crisis. We are in a financial crisis. He says, like you can never imagine, Wall Street is collapsing. We are in a recession. Adam said at New York event hosted by non-profit Project Hospitality as cited by Hamodian News Outlet. Now, this is contrary to what the President of the United States said a few weeks back. Is it that he's trying to prevent the panic, the hysteria? Well, it's here. Can't hide it anymore. We are in the early days of it. Only the wise will understand. Look at the news. New York City stores are locking up spam and other foods amid shoplifting surge. This is what is happening. Let's read. Some New Yorkers are resorting to theft as inflation lifts the cost of everyday goods, including food. Cans of spam. A cooked pork product. They can keep that. That retails for 3.99 per 12 ounce tin. Appeared to be encased in an anti-theft container at a Dwayne Reedy store in Manhattan. They can keep that. But here's the point. Here's the point. Those who know what is happening, you can see the results in their action that something is brewing. Something is is coming look at this other news why old spice colgate and dawn are locked up at drugstore 
no old spice, perfume, Colgate, clean your teeth, Dawn to wash your clothes. Most of the products on the drugstore shelf are behind lock and key. Even everyday items such as deodorant, toothpaste, candy dish, detergent, soap, and aluminum foil, manufacturers that supply lock cases and devices to chain stores have seen their businesses boom, locking up their shelves in a last resort for stores, but it has never been more widely practice do you see where we are who is going to benefit do you see where we are who will benefit from this can you see what's happening do you see that it's coming can you see the inevitable do you understand it now let me tell you who will benefit flourishing manufacturing cities fell into decay fertile districts return to their native wildness Intellectual dullness and moral declension succeeded a period of unwanted progress. Paris became one vast arms house. Remember our first quote that we start with? Spoke about the French Revolution. Paris is in France. Paris became one vast arms house and it is estimated that at the breaking out of the revolution, 200,000 paupers claimed charity from the hands of the king. The Jesuits alone, who flourished? The Jesuits alone flourished in the decaying nation and ruled with dreadful tyranny over churches and schools, the prisons and the galleys. Church, what's happening here? Who flourish? Jesuits. Remember we spoke about this before? Now it's happening again. History is repeating. They are behind it. We see the smoke. And know where the fire is. They are behind it. Let's see further news from South Africa. White people. Mm, mm, mm. Are you seeing this? White people will be the first target. South Africa's Julius Malima warns of impending violence because the poor are getting poorer. And what do you think is happening when the poor are getting poorer? The rich is getting richer. Let's take a piece out of this. The country waking up one day with very angry people that are not going to be reasonable, discontent with the ruling African National Congress, ANC party in South Africa, is at all-time high levels due to the social conditions within the country and the poor becoming poor. When the unled revolution comes, the first target is going to be white people. I'm just reading the news. I'm just reading. Mr. Malima told the BBC's Hard Talk program, adding that the uprising would also target black elites. The only way to head off the violence was an immediate intervention to raise the quality of living for poor people in the country. Continuing, he says, protesters have demanded the immediate suspension of South Africa and the A South African and the ANC president Cyril Ramaphosa, the reduction of the fuel price. There it is, fuel price, immediate end to the load shedding, which is planned electricity blackouts, interruptions, and implementation of the living wage and the 12% salary increase for all public servants they have made their demands the people are crying out are you feeling the pinch i can tell you i am feeling the pinch where are you feeling it pastor prices for food i'm feeling the pinch where are you feeling it gas price and i am telling you it is hardly sustainable it's gonna break the people will soon have enough they're going to march against their government. They're going to make their demands and make it happen. There will be riot and bloodshed. That's what's going to happen. It's inevitable. And what's our best preparation now? What is our best preparation? I'm telling you to be hid in Jesus. Let's take this piece from Great Controversy, page 279, paragraph 3. What did it say? What does it say? But under the domination of Rome, watch this church, the people had lost the Savior's blessed lessons of self-sacrifice and unselfish love. 
they had been led away from the practice of self-denial for the good of others. The rich had found no rebuke for their oppression of the poor. The poor no help for their servitude and degradation. The selfishness of the wealthy and powerful grew more and more apparent and oppressive. For centuries, the greed and profligacy of the noble resulted in grinding extortion toward the peasant. The rich wronged the poor and the poor hated the rich. What happened? The rich wrong the poor and the poor hated the rich. The rich wronged the poor and the poor hated the rich. I can tell you today, this hatred is building in society. People will take so much and no more. People will take so much and no more. What will you do? What will you do? I've told you already. What's the solution? The best preparation is to be hid in Christ. Not tomorrow, for that's not promise. But to be hid in Christ today. Now, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Those with children, it's going to be even more difficult. Let's take another piece. GC 281. By working upon the jealousy of the kings and the ruling classes, Rome had influenced them to keep the people in bondage. What did Rome do? Influence them to keep the people in bondage. Well knowing that the state would thus be weakened and purposing by this means to fasten both rulers and people in their thrall. With far-sighted policy, she perceived that in order to enslave men effectually, the shackles must be bound upon their souls. There was a little confidence existing between the people and the rulers. Suspicion fastened upon all the measures of the government as designing and selfish with a depraved and cruel aristocracy and an impoverished and ignorant lower class, the state financially embarrassed and the people exasperated. It needed no profits I to foresee a terrible impending outbreak. And that is what is happening now. It's building, it's going, will not be stopped. It's going to break. It will break. It is inevitable. This is the inevitable. What's that, preacher, pastor? Riot and bloodshed. It's coming to a town near you. I want you to read what this article says, also dated the Telegraph, August the 4th. Britain may be brewing a rebellion once again. Those who are in Britain, in England, how is it over there? I'm reading your news. Britain may be brewing a rebellion once again. It's simple. A simple idea. We demand the government scrap the energy price rises and deliver affordable energy for all. We will build a million pledges and by October 1st, mm-hmm, those who are in England, those who are, want to come back home to Jamaica uh, to do your country living until October the 1st. <laughs> until October the 1st, it says we will build a million pledges. And by October the 1st, if the government and energy companies fail to act, we will cancel our direct debits. There was a major riot in London in 1990. That's not something I would like to see, but I think... Think, come now, do you see my title? But I think it's almost inevitable, do you see my title, that unless the government does take much more effective action to help people, there will be widespread civil unrest. There will be what? Widespread civil unrest. When are they giving the government till? October the 1st. Those who are in England, you're coming home, Jamaica, you're going to do your country living in Jamaica. I wanted to make note that the troubles will be all around the world. 
We will only find rest in Jesus, protection in Jesus, peace of mind in Jesus. We're coming down to the end. Let's take this piece right here. It says, enough is enough. Enough is enough. It says, this winter, I will be refusing to pay my energy bills. We're coming to the end. Listen to this. I have come. This is a guardian. I have come to realize that it is only by collective action that we can persuade the government and the energy companies to make some drastic changes. Don't Pay is aiming to get one million people to pledge to strike. It's a big number, but it matches the scale of this crisis. I understand that 70,000 have already signed up, and as people talk to one another, non-payment will become more and more socially acceptable. The government does seem to be failing the poorest people, though there have been several years where wages, particularly in the public sector, have been suppressed. Hence, all the talk of strikes. By suppressing these wages, the government has been pushing people towards poverty. Did you read that? Did you get that? Do you understand what's happening? Do you see what's building? It's coming. It's inevitable. It is here. The people are running the campaign. Don't pay. Refusing to pay won't pay. There is a head-on collision between the people and the government which will equate to civil unrest, riot and bloodshed. It is inevitable. You must now ask yourself, when will the volcano erupt? When will the earthquake start? When will the fire be kindled? Church, we are here. Let's come Full circle. Don't pay UK. There it is. Don't pay UK. Campaign to boycott payment of energy bills gathers pace. It's building. It's coming. Let's read what this man has around his neck. UK, rich state, mass fuel, poverty. There are the issues and it continues and it's there and the people have had enough. Carrie says she became involved in Don't Pay UK. There it is. Don't Pay UK to voice her disgust at these huge increases, which have fuel bigger bonuses and dividends for those at the top. It's time those of us who still have extra money each month show solidarity and make a stand for those facing fuel poverty. Carrie continued. Harry continued, it's time for a societal change where the culture of massive profits off the back of poverty ends. The people have had enough. They have had enough. It's coming. It's here. Can you feel it? Are you reading it? Do you see it? Are you listening? The people are talking. The news are bringing it. We have come full circle. A nail in a short place. It's inevitable. Riot and bloodshed. And now, let's stop playing games. Now, let's get it together. Now, where is your character? My question. Are you hid in Christ? What is your answer? Those online, what is your answer to the question? Those watching live, let me see your response. Are you hid in Christ? That's my question. Are you hid in Christ? Lorenzo, Divida, what's your answer? Dwayne, what's your answer? Are you hid in Christ? Are you hid in Christ? This is a solution. This is the only way. Millions of us won't be able, are you seeing this, to afford food and bills this winter. I want to tell you that here in Jamaica, we don't have winter. But winter carry its own challenges. Mm -hmm. Winter carries its own challenges. The cold, more food is needed, other preparation is needed. 
It says millions of us won't be able to afford food. This news is not for Jamaica. We don't have winter. But are we having the effect of inflation? Yes. Rising food prices? Yes. The gas? Don't even mention it. But this coming winter, October, November, December, January, February, millions of 2023, millions of us won't be able to afford food and bills this winter. Let's read underneath that. Just underneath. What did it say? We cannot afford to let that happen. The people says we cannot afford to let that happen. Watch this. We demand. What does the spirit of prophecy say? The people will go to the government and demand. It says we demand a reduction of bills to an affordable level. They are not trying to ask. They are telling the government you must do this. We will cancel our direct debits from October the 1st if we are ignored. And listen, the campaign starts now with your help. Church, it is inevitable. Church, we've come full circle today. Serve this meal today. How was it? How did it taste? Are you filled? Satisfied? Encouraged? Informed? Pressing forward? This is midweek power. The people have had enough. Riot and bloodshed, it's inevitable. What happened in France is going to happen all around the world. Pastor, will you leave us like that? One more serving. Give us something sweet to leave with. Give us an encouragement. A solution let's do it this is midweek power let's read if men this is coming from ministry of healing let's read it says if men if men would give more heed to the teaching of God's word they would find a solution of these problems that perplex them are you listening read much might be learned from the Old Testament in regard to the labor question and the relief of the poor. In God's plan for Israel, every family had a home on the land with sufficient ground for tilling. What's another word for tilling? Farming. Thus were provided both the means and the incentive for a useful, industrious, and self-supporting life. And no devising of men has ever improved upon that plan. To the world's departure from it is owing to a large degree the poverty and wretchedness that exists today. Did you love that? Did you get a solution from that? Give me two words. Country living. Hashtag as we close. Country living. Hashtag for those who got it. Country living. And up to today, that's God's plan. There has never been an improvement on it. The way forward, the best way, a house with space and land for tilling, farming, food. What's going to drive the people crazy? You think it's high prices for gas? People can park that car. You think it's to buy a new car? People can get around without it. But food. What's the common denominator? Food. What's the constant decimal point? Food. That will cause a hungry man to become an angry man. So, let me ask you, church. What about your food? What about your land? Is it time to reap? Do you have your corn and your yams planted? What about a watermelon? Three, four months. The pumpkin? Do you have the space? Have you heeded the country living message? Or are you transitioning? That's okay. Or are you converted but no means to do it? We know what to do. Fast and pray. God will make a way. God will make a way. I want to thank you for joining us today for another midweek power. Today, the 10th of August, 20. 22. God has speared our lives. 
to have another fresh bread from heaven. I pray that you're encouraged, informed, understand ahead of time the inevitable and what's coming. But we know our preparation. If we are already hid in Christ, stay hid in Christ. If we are not, be hid in Christ. Get ready, stay ready. Because Jesus is coming again. We'll meet again. Sabbath, if not in person, then online. Be faithful. Endure to the end. For the same shall be saved. God bless you. Maranatha. Let us pray to close. Let's pray to close. Loving Lord, Eternal Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your people. O Father, who remain faithful, keep us faithful to endure to the end. As we remain focused on the goal, character development, and on the prize, a new crown of life, eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Maranatha.